If you're feeling overwhelmed, burnt out, or stuck, you may need to cut yourself some slack and take a time out. Our next guest says there is great power in the pause. Rachel O'Meara is an executive at Google and the author of Pause, harnessing the life-changing power of giving yourself a break. And she joins us now. Welcome, Rachel. So great to have you here. Nice to be here. So you have a very inspiring personal story that led you to this discovery of how great a hiatus can yeah. be. Can you tell us about it? Of course. So I work at Google currently, and about five years ago, I was not feeling really good in my job. I felt like I was working all the time and burning out, and I was just getting these signs that things weren't going so well. So instead of leaving and quitting, I ended up taking a three-month unpaid break to really reassess my path and align with what I think could probably be in a better place for me. And so when you came back to Google, did you feel refreshed and did you have a new role then in a way that was better aligned yeah. with your interests? I did. Oh, so okay. it was intentional to not come back in the same role. And I call a pause any intentional shift in behavior. So mm -hmm. for me, my shift was to, to take an assessment of where I was. Mm -hmm. And I returned in a role that focused on my strengths after I looked at them a little bit during that time, yeah. so I went into sales, and I really liked being in relationships with people and clients, and I'm that's still there. That's great. Now, a lot of people will hear your story and say, wow, that's awesome. I wish I worked in a place like Google that would give me a three-month hiatus. I can't afford to lose yeah. my job, right? So what advice do you have for people that maybe feel stuck, but hey, they still need to keep working to pay their bills? Absolutely. It's not common. In fact, according to a survey from the Global Human Resources Management Group, only 14% of global companies are enabling their employees to take any unpaid breaks. You'd like that to change, by the way. I would like that yeah. to change. And part of my my voice is I want to have people know that it's OK to leave, whether it's a long break, but it can also be literally a day or a weekend or any time that you intentionally set aside so that you can align and really check in to yes. see what matters with you. And that it's more productive for the company in the end, too, because your employees are better aligned to, to their strengths and their talents. Now, let's talk about what you did with your break, because it's important to not just you know, sit on the couch all day and, and watch movies, right? Yeah, so yeah. what did you do? <laughs> that would have been great. It would but, have been great. Uh, hey, maybe that is good for some people. Yeah, and I, and I actually did take about a month to really unwind and, and see where I was. And yeah. then I actually set up some rules for myself. I think it's really important to have some structure going from a place of no structure, of having structure at work, but yeah. then going to your house and absolutely knowing no plan. So getting up and leaving the house by 10 a.m., 9 a.m., mm -hmm. going to a coffee shop, allowing only 30 minutes minutes to check my digital devices for for any type oh, of that's social a good media. One. Yeah. Uh, deciding not to check my phones after 7 p.m. I yeah. think that, that, I call that a digital device pause. What about travel? Can that be eye-opening and important? Uh, yeah, travel is a great way. And I think a pause is wonderful outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. So if you actually took a trip in your local community or it could be an epic journey across the globe, it really doesn't matter. It's about what you're ready for and what works for you. Right. So let's talk about w what advice you would give someone. I mean, can a pause be as long as a day off? or does it need to be yeah. an extended period of time? Yeah, so in the book I talk about all different types of pauses, mm -hmm. and the first one is the daily pause. It can literally be a breath. Yes. <laughs> it can be as simple as just inhaling and exhaling and checking in and seeing how I feel, what do I want to do with my day today, my hour, my lunch break, whatever it is, and that can be a start. It can be an intentional trip where you want to take solo time and really assess a big question or challenge that you have. Mm -hmm. I have uh, a few signs that I know are important to look for if I know I need a break. And one of them is I'm not really enjoying what I'm doing right now and I want to take something different. Right. And so what should the goal of your pause be? I mean, should you go into it feeling that you need to come out the other side with a better understanding of yourself? Yeah. Or what should your goal be? Yeah, great question. So the idea is that you may not even have a goal. And the whole idea is it's OK to give yourself permission to take that pause. Mm -hmm. And again, it's intentional shift in behavior. So I can have a goal. And my intention, which is, in my case, a goal, could say, I want to be more clear about something. Yes. I want to understand where I belong in this relationship. It could be a, m a number of different things. It could be, where is my career going to take the next step? Right. Now, you also have in your book some science about what literally happens to our brain <laughs> when we take a break. 
and it's good, right? Good. <laughs> the good news is, as we all know, taking breaks, um, allowing yourself a little downtime, and again, it's intentional, mm -hmm. can shift your your patterns of thinking or where you are. So there's uh, there's something called the amygdala hijack, where if we're in that fight or flight mode and we're panicking or just under a lot of stress, which we can all relate to, yes. we tend to not think so clearly. So if you actually allow yourself to have that breath, I'm talking just one breath, where you yeah. really are conscious and aligning with yourself, you can go, okay, what am I feeling right now? And you activate a whole nother system in your body. You know, we live though in a culture where we're expected to be always on, go, 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 pedal to the metal with your career. If you hit a roadblock, power through it. That's what we're, we're yeah. taught, right? And so this is sort of goes contrary, you know, your advice is sort of contrary to what we hear. So. How do we know if we feel like, boy, I really need a break, that A, we're not just being lazy, and B, maybe we should hit it into high gear and try mm -hmm. to power through it? How, do, how can yeah. we distinguish that? Yeah, I think that's a great way to think about it. I call it the pause paradox. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with working hard. There's nothing wrong with giving it your best shot. In fact, that's what we should all be doing. Yeah. However, if things aren't feeling great, mm -hmm. if you're feeling burnout, if you're not quite sure that you're in the right spot, you're gonna kind of check in and know that. Mm -hmm. So simply allowing yourself that space really to create your create the space to find your truth, I call it. And you can really tune in and know what could be next for you. And it doesn't have to be a long, epic journey, right. like I and said. You do it on the bus in the morning, you right? On the, on the Google bus. bus. You don't have to create more time. It's literally crafting and carving out what you already do, yeah. but be really more in tune, align with that, breathe, mindfulness. That's really I feel like taking is. a breath right now. Ah, well, we are, we're in the lunch break. Yes, we're in the lunch break. <laughs> Rachel Amira, thank you so much for coming in today. You're welcome. And reminding us how important it is, just take a pause.